Welcome to the Red Storm Roundup CEC TV studios here in the Jennings building on the campus of Dixie State University. We catch you up with everything basketball related in the PacWest and NCAA tournaments. Baseball and softball come back from a road trip in the Bay Area. Golf's playing locally for the women, men over in Southern California. While the tennis team has done unprecedented things, we'll catch you all up right here on the Red Storm Roundup. I'm John Potter flying the mothership solo this week, and we'll get you right into action with our basketball season recaps. We'll start with our women who had a very interesting jaunt in the Pacific West Conference Tournament. Our women actually had a barn burner in the opener, the quarterfinal against Dominican, where they had a big lead midway through the second half, saw that lead slide, and then Taylor Mann and what I'm calling the shot came back with a buzzer beater in regulation to send the game into overtime in which Dixie State defeated, defeated Dominican 99 to 86. We have video conference or courtesy of the Pacific West Conference for Taylor Mann's shot that uh, sent that game into overtime that we'll have for you. Also, the women ended up uh, losing in the semifinals to the eventual conference champion Academy of Art, Art U, held a lead with uh, uh, at the half by one point, ended up losing by 10 to a very good Urban Knight squad. So at the first year under the helm of head coach Katharia Turner, our women's basketball program finishes 14 and 14 overall. Some individual honors for our women's basketball team. Haley Holmstead, who led the conference in scoring, and a lot of people wonder where this team would have been without the prolific scoring of Haley Homestead was a near unanimous selection in the Pacific West Conference first team and then also gained first team all West honors as voted on by the sports information directors via the Dactronic system. So a very good accolade. Haley now has a chance to be named all American based on her high uh, scoring efforts. And Kayla Miller, the junior guard, was named to the Pacific West Conference honorable mention list for her efforts this year. Again, I uh, believe we have the video of Taylor Mann's shot that uh, took it to the Pacific West Conference quarterfinals in regulation. This is from Golden Gymnasium in San Diego. Homestead brings the ball up. At this point, Dixie State down three in the final seconds. Mann just trying to find someone to pass it to under the 10 second mark off a of screen. Mann gets a good shot at the first opportunity. It rattles in and out. A long tipped out rebound. Mann gets it at the top of the key with like two seconds left, throws up the prayer, banks it in for what was the game tying shot. There was still a little bit of time left on the clock. Katharia Turner telling her club, hey, stay on the bench. We don't need a technical. And Taylor Mann shot, send that game into overtime. Dixie State then scores the first 10 points of the overtime period to cruise to the 99 to 86 win. That'll be a shot that Taylor Mann and the rest of the crew remember for a long, long time. Again, congratulations to our women's team for a, a break even 14 and 14 overall season. We transition to the men who did not fare so well in the Pacific West Conference Tournament. They were won and done by the sixth seed Hawaii Pacific in the quarterfinals. The Red Storm losing that one 71 to 65. Like the women had a lead at the half, had a substantial lead midway through the second as well. And then the Sea Warriors came back, clipped them in the end with a, a couple of good bounces and some good plays going their way. Based on the regular season resume, though, Dixie State was awarded the sixth seed in the West Regional, which was held at Casulas Arena in San Bernardino. And unfortunately for the Storm again, one and done, losing to third seeded Cal Poly Pomona 73 to 65. The Broncos sporting one of the best defenses in the entire nation, only allowing 56 points a game. And Dixie unable to come back at any point in the second half to take a lead and end up losing for the fourth time in five years in the first round of the NCAA tournament. All Pac West selection, Zach Robbins, no surprise. He was selected as the Pac West preseason player of the year, backed it up, ne averaging nearly a double double for the season. First team All Pac West, also, like Homestead, named a first team All West region via Dactronics. Daquan Thompson was named to the second team, Dalton Grosskreitz to the third team, and senior point guard Kimball Payne earned an honorable mention. The Red Storm finished their campaign 21-7, the fifth consecutive year that Dixie State University has finished with a 20-win season under head coach John Judkins. 
kind of sad to see the way that the season ended for the five seniors, including Kimball Payne and Dalton Grosskreitz in the starting lineup. Then you had guys like Landon Clegg, Curtis Pappenfuss, and Lewis Garrett coming off the bench. Obviously not the way they wanted to see it done with a loss in the PacWest tournament and then a loss in the NCAA tournament, but still a great legacy for those guys being a part of such some high scoring and high winning teams. Again, the fifth year that the Red Storm have won at least 20 games. So basketball will start some individual workouts once the Division II tournament ends in a couple of weeks, getting ready for what should be another exciting season of Red Storm hoops at the Burns Arena next season. Again, our congratulations to both teams for great efforts this year. We're going to take a timeout. When we return, we shift our attention to the baseball diamonds. I have an interview recorded previously with head coach Chris Fatenauer after the baseball team's magnificent trip to the Bay Area where they took seven out of eight games against Academy of Art and Holy Names. We pry the brain of the head coach Chris Fatenauer next, and you're listening and watching the Red Storm Roundup right here from the CEC studios. If you're in pain, give us a call. We use the latest technology to get you pain-free within six visits. If we get you in early, we can actually help reverse the effects of the car accident now versus waiting and having to do more treatment. This is Dr. Justin Poppy, dinner and a movie on The Doctor. Call now for a free consultation. You're no dummy. Accidents hurt. You need to come in today or tomorrow to be pain-free. I'm Dr. Justin Poppy, 656-2888. Someone once asked if I had put in a, a bench so that they had somewhere to sit as they're coming in. And to me, that's a waste of time and energy because all you do is dust it off as you come through. Uh, we've designed the pharmacy so you don't have to wait. As you come in, there might be a line, but within 10 minutes, we've got you out of our store. Friendly service and a pharmacist who knows you by name. Stapley Pharmacy, your complete family pharmacy. We'll have you out the door in 10 minutes. Quick chat with head coach Chris Feinauer of the Dixie State baseball team. Uh, let's take you back to the opening two series of the season. Obviously, people from the outside are going to look in and see 0-7, oh, what the heck went wrong? So that's the question. What the heck went wrong in that 0-7 oh, start? You know, we, we just we just weren't our whole team yet, you know, in terms of I mean, we had a couple injuries. You know, Chris Kaplan, who's an anchor in our offense, you know, the last couple years was out, and, and Kevin Klein who was our team MVP last year, was injured coming into it and I think started one for 23. And, you know, you talk about taking two of the bats out of the middle of your lineup and having a bunch of other guys run out there that are freshmen or have sat out for a year and just haven't done it at our level. We were new. We, you know, it was like we were running a bunch of freshmen out there and so we really had to learn. I think the fact that we played all those games really close other than one. I mean, in those seven games we played three one-run games, three two-run games, and, and one blowout. I think that helped too. It, it, it helped not lose the guys and not, you know, they, they continued to believe in what we were doing. They, they stayed bought in. They were committed to each other still. And so once we got a couple wins under our belt, it wasn't like we were that far off. So so we got it going quick, you know, after that. And, and uh, But we're still using that as some, some fire. You mentioned getting the wins, opening with the Cal Baptist series. You go in there without a win. Cal Baptist ranked in the region, expected to win the Pac West for a second straight year. Kaplan and Klein aside, who others stepped up starting with that Cal Baptist series and also has made a, a nice run for you over these last handful of series? Well, Austin Bartleson and Trey Camachi have been two guys that, that we plugged into the outfield. Kind of, you know, because Kaplan was out early, so they got some time out there. They have both played really, really well. You know, Trey's leading our team in hitting right now. He, he plays fast. He, he runs the bases hard. Um, he plays a good outfield. So he's really ignited us. You know, in a, in a way we didn't think. You know, he came here as a pitcher infielder, and for him to be playing center field and third for us and having the success he has has been great. And then Austin Marlson, who we knew was kind of just a grinder, dirt bag guy. You know, he um, came from far from home. You know, he's from Spokane. He had a lot of opportunity to stay close to home, but he kind of wanted to prove a point and, and go to a program that he felt was a winner and wanted to be a part of that. And, and uh, you know, wasn't in the picture a lot early and, and just kind of fought and scratched his claw his way in there. You know, he's been in the top three guys in our in our uh, in our offensive batting average all year, so he's done a really good job. And the freshman Drew McLaughlin's played really well in the middle infield for us. He's he's hit leadoff for us, and, and he squares the ball up a lot. Um, he gives himself a chance to get on base every single time, and he can run a little bit, so that's helped too. 
next question will be prefaced since you have the pitching coach sitting in the office to your left. Uh, you mentioned at the beginning of the season that pitching and defense was going to be a huge portion of your of your philosophy. Uh, other than maybe the first couple of series, where's the pitching lined up? Starting rotation and all the way to the back end. You know, we, we've really used five guys. You know, we've used Chance Abreth, Cody and Court Christofferson, John Conkey, and Bronson Anderson. You know, a little bit interchangeable with a couple of those guys week to week, based on rest, based on this last stretch of twelve days we had, where we had I think. 12 games in, in 12 or 13 days. So, um, but Abreth, Abreth, we thought would be our number one. You know, uh, in the winter, we went with Court Christofferson kind of in that role, just being a senior early. But Abreth really settled into that. He's had two or three really good outings in a row, and, and starting this week, he's going to settle into that number one spot. Um, John Conkey, who's had two really good outings in a row, um, he's going to he's going to be back in the rotation this week. And then the Christofferson brothers, who have been anchors in there the last couple of years, they'll they'll continue to be in there. And then we're going to move Bronson to the bullpen for right now. Um, we're going to run up against two teams in the next two weeks with quite a few left-handed bats. And uh, we like, you know, with him and Taylor Stone and Mike Nowak coming out of the bullpen, we've been really using Stone a lot. And we've kind of picked and choose that one time where we got a couple left-handers. And now knowing we got two or three guys, um, feel like we can use them a little more would be nice. Hill and Parker at the back end of your bullpen. How much of a luxury knowing that those guys can DL for you? It's been really nice, mainly because they're strike throwers. You know, that's the main thing. One, they're strike throwers. Two, they want the ball. You know, it's not like we're asking them to do something that's out of their character or their makeup or something they've never done. They both come in and pound at the zone um, with two and three pitches. That's been really big. It's not just, you know, even though both of them feature, you know, an 89, 92 mile an hour fastball. Um, they both have really good sliders. Matt Hill has a plus changeup, which we've been able to use him against some left-handed batters because of that. And also Taylor Stone in that mix, you know, in terms of that kind of seventh, eighth, ninth, if it matches up right with left-handers, yeah. they've been lights out and they've been really good for us. Got a home series coming up for what seems like the rest of the month and, and into April. Let's start with the two that are coming up with Hawaii Pacific and Hawaii Hilo, both in Pac West play. Kind of mentioned they come in with a lot of left-handed bats, but what else do you know about the Warriors and the Vulcans? You know, HPU is very offensive. You know, they've been very offensive. They haven't got off the island much yet. You know, I think they've maybe played one series off, but they've got a good record. They they split with Cal Bat um, last week, and then I think took three out of four from Point Loma. So they're playing really good baseball. Um, and uh, but the, last year they really pitched it against us. Now that was on the islands, which as you know, it's it's often different there. But you know, they'll pitch a little bit, but mainly they'll be an offensive group. You know, they can usually run a little bit, and they'll have a couple boppers in the middle of their lineup, and they'll compete. So. We're really, you know, focused on that series right now. And then, you know, with Hilo coming in next, you know, I don't know what we're going to see because they, they graduated some of their better players last year, but they had a couple of young guys that were pretty good and they got a brand-new coach, you know, so I think they're doing some things a little bit differently and they were very competitive. I think they split with Cal Baptist as well and maybe split with Point Loma as well. So they played really good off the bat. So um, we're looking forward to playing at home, though. That's, that's the key. And, you know, we like our home crowd and home cooking, so we're ready to go. About when midway portion through this season, 27 games in, if you had to assign a, a letter grade to your overall program so far, where would you be? <laughs> oh, probably a B plus, and that's just because we've competed. You know, after the start, we could have we could have cashed it in. You know, we could have lost some guys, and and uh, and we didn't. You know, our guys continued to even during that stretch. If you heard them in the dugout and at the hotel and on the bus, they were talking about just. Once we get out, you know, the first one's going to be hard. Once we get out of it, you know, we're, we're going to roll. And, and so I think just their competitiveness has been what really pushes that grade up. But, but we have pitched really good. We've played really good defense. And, and with our lineup intact and everybody healthy, we've, we've started to offend well. So I think, we're, uh, I think we're built to make this run, you know, down the stretch. And we have, we have the right leadership, you know, and our older guys that have helped us fight through that start and, and get us to where we're at. So... Um, just looking forward to the next couple of weeks. This weekend at home against Hawaii Pacific. Coach, thanks for the time. Thanks, Joe. Give your favorite athletes a competitive edge by enrolling them in an acceleration training package at Intermountain Sports Performance Training. Our exercise physiologists use scientifically based training protocols guaranteed to help athletes run faster, jump higher, and perform better than the competition. Unlevel the playing field. Learn more at dixieregional.org slash acceleration or call 251-2256. 
is Salisbury Homes the number one builder in southern Utah? It's simple. Unmatched quality, more selection, and happy homeowners. You'll love seeing prices less than buying an existing home. Amazing locations and a 45-day build schedule. The time to build is now, before prices go up. And with Salisbury, choose from dozens of floor plans, all beautifully designed, and you pick your own colors and finishes. Visit alwaysaffordablehomes.com today or call Bunny at 801-472-4734. Our thanks to head coach Chris Fadenauer for allowing us the opportunity to record that interview yesterday. Again, a lot of good things looking up for the baseball team. And we'll hit the, a little more in-depth about their trip to the Bay Area in this segment where we hit our capsules for softball, baseball, and golf. We'll start first with our women's softball team as they took a trip to the Bay Area. And they had a successful trip as well. Currently 23-8 and eight on the season. 11 and 5 in Pacific West Conference play. You see the breakdown of the Bay Area trip on the graphic. Sweep against San Francisco State in non conference action. Split two games in conference against Notre Dame Dana Muir. Their pitcher had a great performance in the opener before the offense uh, came back and won the second game. Then the Storm had an easy four game sweep against Holy Names, including three run rule games, uh, beating them by more than eight runs in five innings. And then on Monday, split against one of the West Region uh, normal powerhouses, Sonoma State. The Seawolves having a little bit of a slow season, but a, a big win in the first game led by Courtney Hine, who had three hits and three RBIs. And then in the nightcap, Storm actually had a lead going into the sixth inning and ended up losing it as they dropped a, a one-run decision to the Seawolves over on the campus of Sonoma State. Dixie returns home for the next eight games over at Carl Brooks Field starting this weekend with last year's co-champions in the league, Hawaii Hilo, and then the Chaminade Silver Swords will be in a week later after that. Uh, Coach Randy Simpkins very happy with his squad right now. Uh, the main question mark is when is Michelle Duncan going to get healthy? The normal number one starter in the circle has been hindered by a little bit of an injury and has not pitched for the last three or four weeks. Aaron Feichert, Brooklyn Beardsheard, and Maddie Snow have had to kind of fill in those innings for the Red Storm. So once Duncan gets back from injury, you then have four really good starters for Dixie, and that could make a really good push run, especially with some games here at home coming up. Baseball action, they were also in the city by the bay, actually in the East Bay over in Oakland, taking on Pacific West Conference foes and Academy of Art and Holy Names. Baseball, after starting 0-7, and we're like, what the heck is going on? Where is this team going to pick up their first win? Have won 16 of their last 21 ball games to make their record 16-11 and on the season. And at this point in time are the current leaders in the Pac West with a 10-2 and mark. As you see on the Bay Area, 3-1 and record against RU. And as you heard earlier from Coach Fadenauer, he thought that game that they lost uh, in the ninth inning could have gone their way if not for a couple of weird bounces. Then bounce back and get a four game sweep over Holy Names as well. You thought softball had a nice favorable schedule with the next eight at home. Baseball gets their next 15 games in the comfy confines of Bruce Hurst Field starting this weekend with a Pac West set against Hawaii Pacific. Next week, Hawaii Hilo. The weekend after that against the Cougars of Azusa Pacific. And then a very crucial non-conference but intriguing West Region battle against Cal State LA. All those games here at Bruce Hurst Field leading into the month of March. So for all you fans out there, plenty of opportunities to see this Dixie State Red Storm baseball team play over at Bruce Hurst Field. We'll switch now to the Lynx as our golf teams had some work over the last couple of weeks. Men's golf actually winning a tournament. They did so against uh, a, a group of Division II folks at Cal State East Bay, a tournament in the northern part of California. Kenny Yu ended up finishing tied for third individually, but it's a good win for Brad Sutterfield and his crew against some good Division II competition. Our men will next be on the links uh, this upcoming week as they'll travel to Southern California to participate in the California Baptist University Invitational. Women last week finished 10th at the SUU Invitational that held locally here in St. George at Sunbrook Golf Course. Uh, D1 and D2 competition in that tournament and the women finishing 10th. Haley Dunn leading the way individually. 
And as of taping today, the Red Storm women playing at the BYU Invitational at Entrada, their classic. They're the only D2 squad in the tournament. A lot of D1s, including national rank Wisconsin and BYU in that field. And they finished 16th after day one competition. They're presently playing at Entrada the third round. And we'll have all the results from that tournament next week on the roundup for you. So that gets you up to date with baseball, softball, and golf. We'll take a quick time out here. When we return, we'll name our Athletes of the Week. Unprecedented, first time ever for one sport here at Dixie State to get an Athlete of the Week. We'll also hit the calendar events here at home. That's for you next. This is the Roundup. I'm John Potter. Glad you're with us. We'll be right back. We've been in business for 27 years. Our specialty, of course, is pizzas. We have calzone salads, pasta. We use whole milk mozzarella cheese. I think the most important thing that makes good pizza is the crust, and then, then the marinara sauce, and then fresh toppings. It's great food. Uh, the price is, is reasonable. You come and try it. I promise you, you'll love it, and you'll, you'll come back. Just come into Roy's and give us a try. It will be the best pizza you'll ever eat. Time to name some outstanding student athletes as Northwestern Mutual presents our Athletes of the Week for the past week. If you've missed on any of them over the past couple of months or weeks, we invite you to log on to DixieAthletics.com. you got to scroll down the page a little bit. But there are nice portraits of our Athletes of the Week down there. We'll start here with this week's winners of our Athletes of the Week and start with our women first. And it's tennis player Stormy Dvorak. Has actually one of the coolest names of any of our student athletes here at Dixie State seeing that we are the Red Storm. Uh, the first time our women's tennis program has won an Athlete of the Week, picked up a victory in number three singles against Dallas Baptist in a tiebreaker. Uh, that was after her only loss of the week, and that was in doubles against Dallas Baptist. The only time Dixie State lost in five matches over in a uh, kind of tournament setting over in Mesa, Arizona this week. She then swept through five wins playing number one doubles with her partner Summer Child and then notched victories in five singles matches also in the number one slot. And then she blanked her opponent six love, six love against Southwest Minnesota State. The Red Storm tennis team 10 and seven on the year, their best record to date and have won five straight matches and Stormy Dvorak's performance part of that great effort as she's named our female athlete of the week. For the men, we go back to the diamond, and Trey Camachi gets our Athlete of the Week. Hit 467 with three doubles, a triple, his first home run, scored 13 times, and knocked home nine RBIs as the Red Storm took seven of eight from two teams in the Bay Area. His performance was also good enough to get conference recognition as he was named Newcomer of the Week. Camachi, a redshirt freshman, actually played at Arizona State as a redshirt, so didn't get a lot of competition but uh, was a pitcher over for the Sun Devils at ASU. Uh, decided to transfer here to Dixie State, and they thought he was going to slot in as an infielder. Actually now is more of an outfielder and designated hitter, and has just come in and played really well, especially since right around the Cal Baptist series. So Kamachi, with his outstanding performance by the Bay, gets the nod for our Male Athlete of the Week. That's always presented by Northwestern Mutual. We transition now to a week in sports here at Dixie State coming up. And we've got an exciting opportunity for our tennis team. It is an exhibition, but the uh, Storm will be playing the Grizz of Montana on our courts here Thursday at 3 p.m. Again, won't count towards the regular season or match total, but it'll be a good indication for Eric Pelton and his squad on how good they really are going against a D1 club in Montana. Again, that's Thursday here at our tennis courts here on campus. Softball will start a four-game series against Hawaii Hilo at Carl Brooks Field starting Saturday. Both doubleheaders Saturday and Sunday will start at 12 noon from Carl Brooks. And you can follow that action if you're not going to be at the stadium by following live stats on DixieAthletics.com. While baseball will be over at Bruce Hurst Field entertaining the Sea Warriors of Hawaii Pacific. Their series starts Friday at 4 p.m. Doubleheaders each day Friday and Saturday. Also live stats 
at DixieAthletics.com. So we invite you, as always, to come out and enjoy Red Storm sports. Again, a great opportunity with great weather to see tennis, softball, and baseball here at Action this weekend. With that, we'll bid you adieu for the Red Storm Roundup this week. Next week, we'll hit more on our softball team as they return home to Carl Brooks Field. We'll have some information from Randy Simpkins and the girls. We'll also look more into baseball with some footage from practice as well as the games against Hawaii Pacific. We'll also tell you how our golf team did, the women over at the BYU Entrada Classic, and see how the men do in their attempt to repeat at the CBU Invitational down in Southern California. Again, thanks for joining us from the CEC studios. Our thanks to everyone in production behind the scenes and in the control room. I'm John Potter wishing for you a great rest of your week. We'll catch you next week on the Red Storm Roundup. Goodbye, everybody.